I recall. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if we, you know, as you know, I've been through lots of stuff, and at, over the course of time, you know, what happens is people think it's going to be easy. I always have this time, not a problem. Here at my my days at seminary, when I was going to seminary. 10 years of going to seminary, the beginning class for the new degree, uh, there was always a rather steep uh, drop off level. Attrition rate. There you go, Pat. The, the go. attrition rate always was. Yeah. Because I don't know why. It just, it just always worked that way. Yeah, it's kind of like my uh, computer science um, uh, classes uh, at Tech. They would be, um, you know, something like order of 100, 125 s students for freshmen. By the time you got to the senior class, they had maybe um, 16, 8. Right. <laughs> you know? Typical, typical in seminaries. Yeah. In seminaries, people think it's going to be wonderful. I'll be a minister. I'll be a preacher. I'll be this. And then they find... This isn't exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, well, you can you can be an evangelist without having to uh, uh, have any seminary training, but you certainly are working from a handicap. Get into words that are new to you that you've never seen before. Take this method of you know folding over the sheet of paper so that you um, can only see the Greek, the Greek uh, words and see how many of you you can translate into English. People roles. Some uh, the, what I've discovered by uh, teaching this class by breaking up words into common chunks, it helps it stick in the brain easier. So I'm, uh, all of these are roles that have to do with people. Uh, most of them uh, are not. Uh, uh, gender specific, but a few are. But if you get down to some other roles, brafos could be a male or a female infant. Pation could, you know, it's, it's just a toddler. Uh, technon uh, is just a, a teenager or a child. Uh, Parthenos, it's a masculine ending, but it's talking about virgins. So, it's it's another one of those words that could go either way. It could be uh, masculine or feminine. So let's go up and look at the gender specific words. Guni, from which we get the word gynecology, is logos is words. Gune or guni is women. So words about women. Uh, modern English, you would say the study of women, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm wanting you to keep thinking. Logos is word, so words about women. Anir is specifically talking about a man. Anir. More than likely, you'll see andros, which means husband. And that's where we get the word android. Going along with the gune, again, you can get gunaikos. Notice it's a masculine ending, but it's talking about a wife. So this is a gender-specific masculine word pointing to a feminine uh, noun. Um, and so that goes back to the original question was asking, you know, are all of these uh, masculine endings and these are uh, examples of, nope, it's just the language. <laughs> uh, Meteor or mitros is a mother from which we get maternal, came right into Greek as maternal. Patir or patros, patronomy, uh, paternal. Patristic, all, all of these are uh, words meaning father. So woman, man, husband, wife, mother, father. Now let's go into the children. Uh, Thugatir, 
or Thugatos. The only way I can remember that was that uh, uh, little girls can be thugs, you know, the darling little thugs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could, you know, wrap, wrap daddy around the, their little finger, right? And uh, so daughter, little thugs, Thugatros or Thugatir. Um, a son is a weos. What was the name of that apostrophe thing again? Okay, this is a harsh breathing mark. It's tilted over to the uh, to the uh, right. Uh, when it leans that way, it means treat it like a uh, an aspirated sound, a ha or a wa, ha, you know. And so it's a harsh, harsh breathing mark. If it's tilted the other way, it just means silent. It's like, okay, why'd you even put it there? So, uh, but this is the only one that we need to worry about is the ones that are leaning to the, uh, to the right. And it, it makes a woo woo sound, so we us for son. Um, sister and brother have the same root. Here, to answer the question, is the feminine ending. So Adelphi is a sister, and Adelphos is a brother. So this Adelph, uh, you could think of it as sibling. And then the ending tells you whether it's male or female. So here's a female sibling, here is a masculine sibling. sibling. Uh, the, uh, when you see a deaf fee, uh, you know for sure uh, it can't be a guy. <laughs> it's talking about a woman. Uh, when we get to our city in uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Philadelphia, uh, people always say it's the city of brotherly love. Um, but we don't see the ending of the Delph. Adelph, so it could be the friendship of siblings if you wanted to go that way. Um, brothers will work for me, but you know, it, it, it really is not that specific. But the philos is the word for friendship love. And so it'd be better to say Philadelphia is the friendship of brothers or brotherly friendship. Uh, an infant is a brephos, even if it's not been born yet. If you're pregnant, you have a brephos. If you have an infant, you have a brephos. Doesn't matter. It's just an infant. <laughs> um, Padion, this almost sounds like uh, Star Wars, you know, the who are uh, Quincus uh, Padme or something. But Padion, just think of it as uh, little kids padding across your carpet. Um, so Padion is a, is a little child. Toddlers, they're, not, they're preschoolers. Technon, think of technology. Uh, so if you really want, as I mentioned over here, if you really want to understand technology, you have to ask a teenager or ask a child. <laughs> ask your fifth grader, they know how to do this stuff. You know, right? So technon, uh, the trick to remember that this is a child is tech technology. A toddler pad, you know, pit padding around. Uh, I don't have a, a, a cutesy word for brephos. Y'all just have, that'll just have to be a memory word. I, uh, I think you could think of it as briefly. Briefly. Okay. That'll work. And then parthenos, uh, masculine ending, uh, but typically used for a woman who is a virgin. And when the Septuagint was translated in Alexandria, Egypt, this would be 200 year BC, 200 years before Jesus, they would translated uh, the Old Testament into Greek for the Greek speaking Jews in Alexandria, Egypt. And so uh, sept septa meaning 70, that, so that's the, um, uh, the story is that there were 70 scholars who independently uh, translated into Greek and they all matched and never had any argument 
I don't believe that, but I do believe there were 70 <laughs> scholars. And um, when, when they translated the word virgin, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son uh, out of Isaiah, the word there in Hebrew is Alma, but the Jewish scholars chose the word virgin. So Alma, you'll hear this a lot uh, where uh, uh, people will try to interpret and say, well, Alma just means a young woman. And that is indeed what the Hebrew means. And, but you can't blame the church for using the word virgin because it's what the Jewish scholars used. They said that Alma, its real intent is that it's virgin. And we go, oh, cool, you know, so Parthenos. How will you remember it's Parthenos? Think of the Parthenon in Athens, that large temple up top. In the corner of one of the corners of that temple is a little porch, and there's a, a ring of uh, uh, young maidens there, and it was named, uh, it was in honor of Athena Parthenos, or the Virgin Athena. More hard stuff. I'm going to just be dumping words on you today. Uh, Anthropos, we already have seen before. This is not gender specific. So anthropology, the study of humans, words about humans. Uh, you could translate it as mankind, humankind, uh, just plain old humans. It's, you know, it's part of your, your translation effort. It just means uh, the body of humans. Archon, that's a long O, Archon, is a ruler. More properly, it's, think of it as a point person or the first person or the first among equals. It's, it's the key guy. Uh, so when we look at archaeology, it's words, logos, words. Archaeo, we, used, we said earlier it meant old or ancient, but it's really words about first times. Uh, so it might, first times of what? It could be first times of uh, a particular culture or of your nation. Um, it doesn't have to go all the way back to creation. Archaeology is more a study of what uh, humans have done uh, in their environment. So it's nations, um, ethnic groups, etc. Uh, and you're looking at their buildings or, or where they had, had lived before. Uh, so, Archon, first, main guy, point person, the ruler. <laughs> if you want to say king, there's another word for that one, and that's Basilewis. Basilewis, Basilewis, Basilewis. And uh, to help you remember that, think of a basilica. We usually think of a basilica being a, a church edifice, but it was also the name of, uh, in those days, of where the king uh, held his court. And he, he was the basilewis in his basilica. He was the king. So, uh, basilewis, king. Archon, first person, ruling person. Here's somebody we know. Uh, those of us in our area, we have Mount Diablos, Mount Diablo, uh, which the Spanish uh, named uh, after Diabolos, which is the Spanish word for devil. It also is the Greek word for it. So here's a word that made it right into Spanish, Diabolos. And dia is a preposition. Dia means through. Bolos comes from the word boli, which means I'm going to throw something. I'm going to throw a stone. So Diablos is someone who's throwing stones at you. <laughs> He's accusing you. He's a slandering you. So uh, uh, I don't know the, uh, the etymology of how we got the word devil out of it, but uh, definitely the Greek word describes what he is doing. He's throwing rocks at you, trying to get you to quit whatever you were doing. He'll accuse you. He'll slander you. Um, they say at the, at the uh, final, our, our final judgment that he will accuse us and Jesus will uh, take the opposite view. 
Yes, gratefully. Thank you, God. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so that's, um, uh, so uh, we say that this is his name. This is really more of his character, just like Christos means anointed one. It's not Jesus's name. It's his, his role or his function. Uh, so here, Davalos is the role and function of this accuser and slanderish um, fallen angel, who we call the devil. Uh, Dulos we've done, which is the slave. What kind of slave? Outdoor. Outdoor, Outdoor slave, yes. You might have picked up these words, ego imi, ego imi. Uh, ego means I, you know, kind of like Spanish, yo. Uh, imi means I am. So if you slam them together, ego imi, it says I, I am. And so ego imi is a redundant phrase, but you will find it throughout the New Testament. <laughs> it's commonly used. It's like, I, I myself, I'm the one that's, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, I'm the speaker, I'm the talker, I'm the door. By the way, this is where we get the, uh, the, um, the psychological term ego. Came right into, uh, right into English. Something on this, you know, the ego I me. Uh -huh. uh, that's a term that uh, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, Exodus 3.14, when Moses said to the burning bush, well, okay, I'm going to go to Pharaoh, but who will I say sent me? And in the Greek there, we, it's Yahweh, the tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, you know, transliteration from the Hebrew, but in the Greek it's ego, I, me, I, I am, and it, when we say Yahweh, and uh, in the Gospel of John, been working on, uh, Je that's what Jesus said. He's, it, we find it several times. Jesus uses it of himself. He uses the very name that God identified himself as. Ego, I, me. I give the old translation, the old pronunciation. But uh, Okay. That means that... Uh... The uh, the Jewish scholars chose those words. It wasn't a, a church. Yes, the, the the Greek translation said chose. It was was done by Jewish uh, scholars. Good, good. About Thank 185, you. Um, BCE. I was saying about the the two hundred somewhere anywhere between one seventy. Yeah, that's close. Very close. Yeah, yeah between one seventy and two hundred BC. Here's the name for a workman. Remember, ergo or erga meant work. Ergates, ergates is a workman. Ergo, ergates. Ethnos, whoops, come back here. I clicked. I didn't mean to click. Ethnos uh, is where we get ethnic group. It was, remember, it was the largest gathering of people you could get. Uh, was an ethnos. What would be the smallest group of people you could get? Anyone remember the word? Micron? No. <laughs> yes. Huh? Little tiny people. No, not micron. <laughs> <laughs> that was a play on a, a movie. I, I forgot what movie I got that from. <laughs> Little tiny people. Yeah. <laughs> Laos, when we get the word laity, so it's a, a small community of people. Ethnos, very large uh, grouping of people. This one is probably a, a, a popular one among uh, preachers because it's so close to uh, the word hypocrite uh, that it almost, you can almost spell it out and you say, oh, that looks like hypocrite. But uh, it's a preposition. Hupo or hypo, which means? Under. Under. And kritis, uh, 
it says uh, it's a critic or somebody who's under criticism, someone who's being judged. So uh, we use the word actor, and that's indeed what the actors in Greek plays were called. They were called hypocrites. But who was judging him? Well, the judge was the audience. And if he did well, he got applauded. If he did poorly, they went, woo! And, you know, right? So uh, uh, that's what they called their actors. It was one who was under observation, one who was being criticized and judged. Um, Hupocrites, an actor. And, and it made it into English as someone who's just simply acting and not being real. We call him today a hypocrite. This is the uh, etymology of where that came from. Going along the same way, Crites is the judge himself or herself. Crites, the person who's doing the judging. There's two different kinds of judging. You could have a Crites who's, who's passing a judgment. Or you could have Kritokos who's trying to make a decision between two, uh, you know, should we go choice A or choice B? Uh, and both of these kind of are uh, parallel with each other. So Kritokos made it into English as a critic, a person who is a, a, play, a critic of a play in the newspaper, uh, is a critic uh, coming from Kritokos. They're helping to decide whether or not you should go see this play or not. Uh, judge Critis usually is in a more of a courtroom sense that I'm going to pass judgment on you. Here's one that made it right into English. Paralutikos, from which we get the word paralytic. The U became a Y. Para meaning... What's para mean? Alongside. Alongside, yes. So he's a paralyzed uh, person. Uh, uh, Luo is, uh, mean, uh, I loosen. So uh, loosened alongside, you know, just like, he's just, he, he's, he can't do anything, you know, can't walk. <coughs> he's, uh, he just like, his legs are parallel and they're not moving anywhere else. They're just, you know, in one position. So he's, uh, it's where we get the paralytic. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a I'm kind of a stretch, but I'm trying to show that there's reason for these funny Greek words. Lu, lu, lu is a root uh, where we get loosen, para meaning uh, alongside. Put it all together and you sound it out and you sound it out in the greek from the adjustment and if your brain says boy that word sounds very familiar uh you're probably right uh it, it may be a word that made it into english we'll see more of this by the way uh philos is a friend so notice this is not phileo if it was an eo with a long o in the end uh, then it would probably be a verb, meaning uh, friend, being a friend or friendship love. But philos is just a noun. It's got an O-S ending, just means a noun. The root is phil, os. So it's just a friend, one who is loved like a friend. Here's another one that looks like an English word, presbuteros. If you change the U, into a Y, you're going to get Presbyterian. Uh, Presbyterus is translated more properly of an elder of a tribe, um, or just simply an elder. Some age, is someone's talking, go ahead. Okay, it's a loose, loose someone's got a loose microphone. <coughs> Presbyterus. No, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Presbuteros, it's, is that the same OS as the OS that's in boss? I mean, it's the same sound. The OS yes. is the same. It's yes. always the same. It's always the same. Presbuteros, yes. Okay. Yep. And uh, it's got a masculine ending. Uh, it's not intended to mean 
male or female. It just is saying that's the Greek word. It's, it's, uh, it's the word for elder. Some aged leader. Could be Kent. Kent, are you aged? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the last word on this slide, I don't, is it showing up on your um, screen? Yeah, it's up. Okay. So soter, which we learned from the acrostic of uh, Jesus Christ, God's son, Savior. Soter is Savior. You will hear this word more in theologies uh, where they talk about soteriology which is a, just a fancy word of saying words about salvation or words about Savior. Uh, ology or logos, words about soter, which is Savior. So words about the Savior, soteriology. How do we get saved? How did God make, make it possible? I'm going to pick these apart here. What is this? Brephos. Brephos. It's Brephos. an os, os ending. Brephos. Uh -huh. Brephos. Let's see. How about this guy right here? Bless St. Louis. Yes. The giveaway is the, the crown, right? <laughs> yeah. So if he didn't have a crown, what would he be? Andros. Andros. I, you don't know that. You don't know if he's a husband, anyone? Oh, that's true. There's another word. Andre. Or something. Anir. Anir. Yeah. A-N-E-R. Anir. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. And if you said anthropos, you go, yeah, okay, he's a human. That would work too. <laughs> you know? But I was specifically thinking, here's a man <coughs> who thinks he's a basilus. He thinks he's a king. Ah, this is the giveaway on this guy. He's got a gavel. What? What what would be the Greek word for this guy? Greekus. Yes, very good. Here is a toddler. I forgot already, Harry. Technos. Padion. Padion, right. Ah. Padding with his feet. Yeah, the technon is this girl over here. Oh, all right. Yeah. So uh, a child through teenage is a technon. Yes, you were very right. Oh, yeah, technon. Yep. And uh, let's see. This guy up here, he is a? Pater. Pater or pater. Uh -huh. uh, Patros or pater. Uh -huh. Patios. And how about this woman? Mateus. Say again? Meta. Matir. 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 Matir, where we get uh, maternal, right, Matir. Hatir, Matir. How about the little girl? I say, uh, 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 Brefos would be down here. That would be an infant. Oh, it's a, it's a tin, uh, a thick nun. Thigatir. Thigatros. Thigatros. Think of thug. Oh, it's a daughter. Yep. Uh huh. And and what would be uh, a uh, 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 this human being right here? Who, if this is the father, this must be the. Dios. 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 Yes, the son. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> How about this fellow with a wrench? Ergatis. Ergatis, yes. He's going to go do some work. He's a workman. Ergo, oh, work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 